Drive the basketball and finish or kick out the shooter. Being able to make those quick decisions. There's the kick out open. Jalen Williams three and he's got himself another one. Wait, did you see how weird that was? So their point guard sets a screen for their shooting guard, who then drives and dumps down a pass to another guy who can play point guard, who then kicks out a pass to their center who knocks down a catch and shoot three. In the last few years, teams still ran lots of spread pick and roll, with the traditional big man setting the screen and then the other players spaced outside the three-point line. This setup creates space to attack, say, less mobile big men who don't want to guard on the perimeter. But the downside of using a big man to set the screen is that it also involves the opposing big man in the play who can then clog up the paint with his size. So what OKC is doing is shifting the normal pick and roll alignment instead by having smaller players set the initial ball screen. For instance, it's not the conventional big man setting the screen here. It's SGA the guard who sets it, and then the ball handler is able to get downhill and finish nicely at the rim. Sometimes just the threat of the screen is enough to distract the on-ball defender. A little momentary glance and that's enough for a straight line drive to the rim. Now, the screen isn't the only thing that makes this play work though. Notice how OKC sends their shooting big man to the corner, which means that his defender, Anthony Davis, hesitates a little bit about lingering in the paint and he's late protecting the rim. When two smaller players are involved in a screening action, typically the defense is gonna switch or show. Most guards or wings aren't used to sitting in a drop coverage like, say, Rudy Gobert. So, the Thunder can prey on this tendency. Like here, Isaiah Joe does a great job of sprinting into the screen, which makes this defender late changing directions on the switch. And because it's happening pretty quickly, communication during the switch isn't perfect, and Jalen Williams is able to get a head of steam downhill and finish with some sweet English. Also notice how, again, the Thunder space this big man to the corner, which pulls the Clippers big man out of the paint just enough to give Williams the angle. Disguising the angle of the screen can also confuse defenses. Like here, Isaiah Joe conceals which direction he's going to set the screen, so then this defender doesn't know whether to communicate to his teammate to switch or not, and that's too late to make a decision. Now, if we go back, also notice the spacing. Because Gilgis Alexander is stationed over here near the corner, his defender then has a really long closeout after the miscommunication on the screen. So to me, OKC is really thinking about how to just create the most space they can. And not just that, but coaches love actions that routinely create defensive miscommunications. Also, note that spacing again, creating basically an impossible closeout. So the Thunder have an extra trick up their sleeve with these screens. As we see here, the Pelicans switch, and the Thunder screener is able to get a nice seal and roll, which then opens the bounce pass for an easy layup. How is he so open though? If we go back, Pelicans defender Trey Murphy is in the paint watching the play unfold. His man's a shooter though, so he gets pulled out of the paint, and then there's no help on the roll. Now, normally, you also might see this defender, the weak side low man, be responsible for tagging the roller. But from his point of view, he sees Trey Murphy in the paint covering that, so he doesn't think to rotate at all. This extra shooter in the play acts as like a chaos grenade. It makes help defenders think an extra moment, which is usually what the offense wants. So OKC is running the same thing again here. You have that shooter pulling the help out of the paint, and you also station your big man in the corner to pull the opposing team's shot blocker out of the paint as well. And so Josh Giddy realizes that as the Jazz switch, a sweet little bounce pass exploits the space that his teammates have created. The Lakers actually contain the initial screen pretty well here, but look what happens when you don't chase the shooter out to the perimeter. This extra guy in the play creates just a moment of indecision that OKC can exploit. 
adding this extra layer to the pick and roll makes it way harder to defend. The Pacers switch this one, and TJ McConnell is in good position here to help on the roll. But the gravity of this shooter just pulls him out of position, and there's another nice little dime from Josh Giddy. So then later in the game, McConnell's in that same position to help on the roller, and he's thinking, well, I don't want to give up that layup again. So he hangs in the paint just an extra beat, and that split second allows the Thunder to punish him, and he's late recovering on the closeout. Part of the beauty of these plays is how interchangeable OKC's group of young ball handlers is. Like, sometimes Josh Giddy can run the show, as can Jalen Williams, as can Shea Gilgis Alexander. So if we go back to the very first play in the video, all three guys I just mentioned are in the play, but one is the handler, one is the screener, and then one is a spacer. There's kind of this perfect balance between having an element of structure with the spacing and guys being in certain spots on the floor, while also having an element of randomness with the speed and timing of the screen depending on the defense. Like, you might want to reject the screen in order to create an advantage. Or, alternatively, you could split it if the two defenders hedge poorly. Or, I mean, you could even have one of the corner guys cut to the basket to give you another option. And don't forget the final piece of the puzzle, involving an additional guy to distract the help and add some more shooting. Now, OKC isn't alone in using smaller players to screen for each other, but they've found a set of tactics that synergize with their personnel, and they might just be the most recent example of how to create marginal advantages by using pace and space. I'm just curious to see what other offensive innovations teams come up with this season. Very interesting stuff, Mike. For those who don't know, Mike is our lead video coordinator and will occasionally have additional thoughts or insights like this after scouting a team or player. And we're trying to get more of those to you this season if you are interested. So let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll be previewing the 2024 season on the next Thinking Basketball podcast. Those podcasts will be back up on the More Thinking Basketball channel once the season kicks off. We are really thankful for your continued support as we enter yet another year. We hope you're excited for the new season too. And as always, hope that you are having a great day.